Now, one question I often get is, how do we combine all these different things that we've talked about? We've talked about things like input boxes and output boxes, predefined procedures and other things. How do we put those all together? So let's take a look at how we can combine many of these in a very simple application that you might run into. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a real simple flowchart for creating a count of numbers and showcasing which ones are prime. In this, we're going to do everything from getting input from a user, using conditional statements, looping statements, and we're even going to go and have a predefined process that we're going to use. So let's see how we're going to do that real quick. I'm going to come over here and add my start terminator. And then I'm going to define two variables. One is going to be is prime. And this is going to be what we call a Boolean value. Something's going to store true or false for us. And then I'm going to choose one that's going to be number. And it's going to start at one. We're going to link those two boxes together like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a simple decision. This is going to be used for a loop because we want to print out a series of numbers from one to a certain number and showcase all the prime values. So I'm going to say number less than 100. So you get the idea because I put in a set value. This is probably going to be a counting loop. My process box is going to flow to my decision. And then I'm going to use a predefined process to determine if the number is a prime number. So I'm going to come over here, predefined process. I'm going to say is prime equals prime check. And I'm going to pass in number. Now you're going to notice that this isn't fitting real well. So I'm going to come over here and resize this box just to make it so I can read a little bit better. You notice I put in parentheses, I put the number that we're testing. This is often done, not necessarily required in flowchart. You have to kind of know your internal rules. But this is done so we know, hey, do I need a sending information to this predefined process? I'm going to connect my yes output there. And then the is prime is a Boolean value, which means we can make a decision off of it. So I'm going to come over here and have another decision. I'm just going to put is prime. Now, remember, we said that we always check to see, hey, this is a Boolean value. So did we get a yes or no, a true or false type of value? Well, because is prime is Boolean, I don't have to make a check. It's already Boolean for me. So I'm going to connect my predefined process to my decision. And then for my yes, I'm going to create an output, which is going to print number is prime and I'll connect my yes to that box now what am I going to do well after I print this out I need to increment number so here's another process box and I'm going to say number equals number plus one take the print from my print box, connect it to my increment. Now, no matter what, I always want to increment whether the number was prime or not. So off my no for is prime, I'm going to come and drag it over to this line here. So we always flow into number equals number plus one. And once we have number equals number plus one, this is going to flow back to where we have our loop decision, which is if number less than 100. So I'm going to come up here and loop back like this. Now, I can if I want to. Let me undo this real quick. You'll notice I have a loop connector at the top, and I can do this as well if you want. Some people prefer that because it makes it a little bit more smooth. That's totally up to you, okay? So I have my yes and no lines for is prime. I have my loop whole process going on here. Now that we're done, I'm going to have an output statement. That's going to be simply here. 
I'm going to say print done processing. This is going to be my no coming off of my loop decision block. And then once I'm done there, I can simply have my end terminator. Type in end and then connect my print done processing to that terminator. So you can see we did a combination of several things automatically. We have output boxes, we have predefined processes, we have condition statements, we have looping symbols, the whole nine yards is all condensed in here. If we want to change this at all, we could actually add some more things like, hey, what number do I want to go to? I'm going to 100, but I could go someplace else or I could change my starting number. And you've kind of seen how we'd already do that. Just a matter of adding a couple extra symbols. And that's what programming really is, is starting off with something, getting this to work, add a little something to it, add a little something to it, add a little something to it. And by the time we get done, we have a whole complex application. We don't sit down and write an application like your Chrome browser or Microsoft Word in a single day. We do little parts. And in fact, it requires whole teams. And that's where those predefined processes come in handy is they allow teams of people to work on a project together. And I say, hey, you're going to work on this process, you're going to work on this process, and I'm going to work on this one. And whether we have one or two people working on it, or we have hundreds of people working on it, we always want to start off with a good idea of what is it that needs to be done. And a flow chart like this is a good example of how we're going to start working through this process. Everyone has different methods. And if you say, well, I like this because it's very visual, allows me to organize it. That's what the flowchart was created for. On the other hand, you might look at it and go, I don't like all those symbols. And that's okay too. You might want to check out our series on pseudocode, which is a more text-based, allows you to read it in a natural language, such as English type of format, to define what it is that your program will need to do. There'll be more videos on that coming up soon.